of the day and then we'll get into the word of God. Never think that what you have to offer is insignificant. There will always be someone out there who needs what you have to give. I'll read that one more time. Never think that what you have to offer is insignificant. There will always be someone out there who needs what you have to give. So, so, so understand that you matter. My friend Tim Gold says this all the time. He said, you matter. And that's true. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. neighbor. Look up in the eyes, say neighbor. neighbor. You matter. You matter. You matters. You, okay? Because sometimes you don't think you do. Sometimes you think only people with titles or drive a certain something or wear a certain something or, or whatever. We, sometimes we only think that they matter. But, but you, you all matter, okay? You all matter. All right, let's go to the Word of God. Let's go to the Word of God. Uh, Ecclesiastes, the 10th chapter, verse 19 is our foundation of Scripture. Ecclesiastes 10 and 19. Let me read New King James Version. This is our foundation of Scripture for part three of Money Matters. Shout, shout Money Matters. Money matters. Yeah, you matter, but money matters. It says, a feast is made for laughter and wine makes merry, but money answers everything but money money answers, answers everything King James said money uh, answers all things okay um, now for those who are just tuning in to this new series when 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 Ecclesiastes when, when Solomon wrote this he don't mean that money answer all things as being spiritual as being emotional in a sense he's talking about money all, um, um, answer all things when it comes to okay physical things all right when it comes to how you live, what you're going to spend, what you're going to buy, all those things. And then we can extrapolate out uh, that when you pour, it affects your health too. You know, and I did a whole series on, on, um, on poverty and the effects of poverty. Y'all remember that? Some of you need to go back uh, on our YouTube, go to Emmanuel, uh, go to YouTube. Uh, dot com slash Emmanuel the connection and, and because poverty drives uh, we, we know that people um, health is bad because of poverty uh, people have a very uh, uh, emotional problems because of poverty and things of that nature that's why God wants some money in your pocket yes. let me say it again that's why God wants some money in your what okay your pocket your purse your bank account your RA you know right your Bitcoin whatever he want, he want, he want you to have it right um, so, so, so money matters in, 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 that, in that sense, and we, and we have to respect it, uh, money. And as we explore, keep exploring today, you need to understand that um, many people just see money as a means of success uh, and a source of security, right? Many even look at it as, as, as a source of uh, means for happiness. But money don't, ever, don't really make you happy. Because if money made us happy, we would not have millionaires and billionaires committing suicide. So obviously money doesn't make you happy. Hey Amen. You don't want to be happy. You want joy. The joy of the Lord is your what? Joy comes from something deeper than what you have. See, you can be without and have joy. Believing that God is going to do something great. Are, are y'all following me? Money is a tool for kingdom advancement. Money is a tool for kingdom advancement. And, and, and we haven't even got into this yet, but we will. It's a tool for kingdom advancement, okay? Missionary work, feeding, uh, feeding programs, having uh, classes, uh, being, being in service here today. You know, that video showed because there was some money to pay for that screen. That's right. And some money to pay for, for all the IT stuff and all the technology stuff up front. Are y'all following me? Right. A Amen. Okay, so, so, so money matters. Now, now, we talked about... And we end, we, we, we we're talking about principles of money. We talked about understanding money as a tool, not a master. You can't see money as a master. Dude, you're going to do everything it tells you. And people can buy you. You know, so, so there was a young lady. There's a young lady. And a man uh, gave her a proposition to have sex with her. Have sex with her outside of her marriage. 
And that woman said, I'm not going to have no sex with you at all. My body is the temple of the Lord. I, I, I would not have such thing with you at all. He said, well, I give you $3 million. She said, he's faithful and just who could forgive us <laughs> and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. See, so, so you got to be very careful, you got to be very careful that money don't become a master to change your mind on things that you say you would not do. So, but we talked about understanding money as, as, a, as, as, a, as, a, um, as a tool and, and not being a master. Remember the OJ song, what? Money, money, money. Yep. Money. Y'all know it, right? Right? It, it, you know, it, it said, for the love of money, people will steal from their what? My own mother. For the love of money, people will rob their... Yeah. Rob them. Because when we don't understand the purpose of money and what it's for and how to get it and how to use it, how to keep it, and how to multiply it, then problems happen. All right? Problems happen. Okay, so we talked about that. Then we talked about the importance of money. Uh, we started this on last week. The, the importance of money in providing for ourselves and others. Okay, so money is there. So another principle of money is, is to provide for you and for others. The Bible says in Proverbs 13 and 22, and I'm going to quickly go through this part. Proverbs 13 and 22 says, A good person leaves an inheritance to his grandchildren, and the wealth of a sinner is stored up for what? The righteous. See, so 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 if you're righteous, uh, there, there's a wealth transfer getting ready to happen. Now y'all, see, y'all ain't ready for this. But everybody's not gonna get it because everybody is uh, I'm not understanding money in the proper way, and God knows He can't give it to you. This is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. We got some wrinkles in us right now. We got some, amen, we got to clean out some stuff spiritually. We got to straighten out some things, amen, uh, when it comes to our morals. We got to straighten out some things when it comes to our finances. Yeah. But money's there for, to provide. The Bible says also in 2 Corinthians 9, 2 Corinthians 9, 8 through 7, 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, verse 7 through 8, it says, Let giving flow from your heart, not from a sense of religious duty. Let it spring up freely from the joy of giving. All because God loves a hilarious, he loves hilarious generosity. Yes, God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace. I talked about this. Why? Why is it going to over overflow you with every form, of, uh, every form of grace? Because you are a giver. You don't understand what money is for. So that you will have more than enough of everything. That's me. Tell somebody that's me. Yeah, more than enough of everything. And in every moment and in every way, you will make, uh, he, will, he will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing you do. Now, think about that. When, when, when you use money properly, then, then God blesses you in abundance in everything you do. That means everything you touch is prosperous. Yeah. Uh, amen. The, 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 the psalmist say, you know, everything they, they touch, it, 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 it prosper. Right. Psalms the first, first Psalms. Are, are, are y'all following me? Yes, sir. Hey, hey, you test my, you touch it, it's going to prosper. Yes, but it happens when you understand what money is and you are a giver. Right. You're not just a holder of money. Right. You're a giver of money. Right. Are y'all following me? Right. Tell your neighbor, don't be a holder. Don't be, a holder. be a giver. See, because if you, if you got your, your fist like this, nothing is getting out of there, but nothing is... Because the wind will blow it away and blow other, blow other in. Oh, you ain't saying nothing. Uh, I, 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 I'm a living witness. I'm a living witness. Okay? Now, I want to talk about in the next uh, few minutes we have together... Uh, I want to talk about two things. Number one is the need for contentment and trust in God's provision. We talk about principles of money. Shout money matters. Money matters. Money matters. And, uh, and, and I'm not here to, uh, turn this down here. I'm not here to, to just stir you up. And I may get stirred up a little bit. 
And, and really, to be honest with you, I don't really get stirred up to stir you up. I get stirred up because I'm stirred up. And, and it's contagious. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, see, Valerie, one of our elders, um, uh, uh, our minister, she came and she was, she was fired up today. And so first she got fired up and she was like, what I do? Stood up. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but there's a need for contentment and trust in God's provision. While money is necessary for daily living, it is vital that we maintain a heart of contentment and trust in God's provision. Because if not, you'll start trusting in the money you see. And the money that you see is temporary. Only what we do for Christ is going to last. Are y'all following me? Who? See, I don't want the money I had 10 years ago. I don't want... Oh boy, y'all... Man, folks, folks, folks doing chicken head. No! But just think if what you just saw 10 years ago is all, is all you're going to put your trust in. And that's what happens when, when, when you put trust in what you have in your hand. Somebody said, well, a bird in the hand is better than two in the bush. Who said that? Ain't no faith in that. One in your hand may die. Two in the bush may have babies. Make more, praise God. It's all how you see it. Glory to God. It's necessary. Now, here's what the Bible says about, about contentment and trusting God's provision. Let's go to Philippians. Let's go to Philippians, and Paul talks about his place. Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse 12 through 13. And we know that Paul was this great missionary that had about four missionary journeys uh, and um, really outside of Jesus evangelized the uh, diaspora outside of Israel more than any one person written in, in history. So Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse 12 through 13 says, I know what it means to lack and I know what it means to experience overwhelming abundance. For I'm, for I'm trained in the secret of overcoming all things, whether in fullness or in hunger. And I find that the strength of Christ's explosive power infuses me to conquer every difficulty. Paul is saying here that I've learned how to be content where I'm at. And trust God for the provision that I need. Paul said, I've been on the ground. King James said, Paul said, I've been on the ground, base, a base, and I've been above. Yeah. Through all of that, I can do all things through Christ who what? Strengthen me. I love what uh, Passion Virgin says, and I find that strength of Christ's explosive power infuses me to conquer every difficulty. We really need to pay attention to this. Because many of us get a little crazy when the money gets funny. Little, and, and, and now I know ladies that men, uh, you know, uh, can be there. I'm not saying it's, it's always, uh, but can be there to help provide. And of course, ladies, some of you provide, some of you provide even more, than, uh, make more than your uh, spouse. But, but men, you know, Many times, it's not all the time, but many times we can feel a little co more comfortable when things are a little shaky. Women, they want security, overall speaking. And when things get a little crazy, they start looking foolish. What's going on? Why can't we do this? And why can't we do that? What is going on? Right? Um, but let me say this, and, and rightfully so, but all of us collectively need to trust God when, the, when, when what we have in the bank says you are in trouble. Now, now I, I'm, I, I'm not there, and I haven't been there in a while. I pray I'm never there again. I don't ever want to see my bank account look crazy. Anybody with me? Can I get a witness? In the old church, they say, can I get a witness? <laughs> Got a witness. I don't ever, ever, never, ever, ever. But the truth of the matter is, we don't know what life going to give us. 
We plan for the best, but we have faith for the worst if it happens. Paul said, I've been up and I've been down, but in everything, I've trusted God. And so now you got to trust God because here's what God is going to do. You're going to be very comfortable and God going to say, you need to sacrifice to get to the next place. And he's going to ask you to take some stuff you work hard for and sow it into ministry, and bless somebody. And you're going to say, oh no, God, I work for this. But God is just trying to test you whether you will trust him as the provider. He's trying to take you to the next dimension. He's trying to take you to the next place. Where you at is not where you're going to be. And God got to get to your heart because he knows where a man's money is, man or woman. That's where your heart is. And God's trying to get your heart. So he says, sacrifice. Here's why it's hard for rich people to enter in heaven. Not because it's impossible, because God said it is. It's because they have placed their eyes of security on what they see in their registry of their account. And when they start to go get crazy, they get crazy. Because they have substituted money for God. And you can't get that way. That's why, that's why people like Kathy Truitt and, 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 and David Green. David Green owns Hobby Lobby. Of course, the Truitts own, own Chick-fil-A. People, people like them who have given millions. Do you, know how, do you know how much money Chick-fil-A could make if they open more money they could make a year? Open up on Sundays? Come on, I'm mad right now. I can't go down and get some. <laughs> right? Sunday, come on. Get, get. Million, billions but the principle is what they what, what they going after David Green Hobby Lobby will give discounts to, to nonprofits and churches and, and a blessing and, and, and goes to Assembly of God Church there, there in Oklahoma okay the, the, they are examples of how you take your money and not trust it and then those, and they, some of them not even saved, but the billionaire club who, who have vowed and every year give half of their billions away every single year. Huh? Because when you do things like that, it teaches you not to depend on money. Money, you, 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 trust, me, you trust God. You got to be content. I'm not saying you're satisfied well yet. How many, how many of you want to go, go higher? See, the, the Bible says we go from faith to faith and glory to glory. Y'all follow me? So God wants you to go higher. He wants you to go higher. He wants you to, to, to grow in your finances. He wants you to grow. We're going to talk about stewardship in a second. And, and that as well. Okay? But, but, but in order to do that, you got to trust him now. You got to believe now. Somebody shout now. now. Money matters. It plays a role. It plays a role in your life. And that's why you can't be stingy. Let's go to Philippians 4, 14 through 16. Let's drop down a couple verses. Well, one verse actually. For, uh, verse 14 of Philippians, the fourth chapter says, You so graciously provided for my essential needs during this season of difficulty. Now, this is Paul talking to some churches that helped him while he's doing God's work. Verse 15, for I want you to know that the Philippian church, here it is, was the only church that supported me in the beginning as I set out to preach the gospel. You were the only church that sold into me financially. And when I was in Thessalonica, Thessalonians, excuse me, Thess Thessalonians, you supported me for well over a year. Now, stop. Now, let's get some background. The Philippian church is reported to be, have been, at this time, the poorest church there it was in all of Asian Manor, all of the area. They were the poorest. But the poorest church served him gave to him financially for a year. Are y'all following this? Money matters. Who you give your money to matters. I, I haven't finished the scripture yet the, because we quote 
the last part of this. But we don't quote the requirement of receiving the last part. Are y'all hearing me? They supported the work of the man of God. Or it could have been a woman of God if Paul was a woman, but he wasn't. Because God don't play that. So all you uh, uh, chauvinistic pastors that are men that are talking about God can't work through a woman, you need to sit down somewhere. And I say it there. Come talk to me. Now God uses who he wants to. Donkey. Fish. Deal with whoever. We have different roles, but God, God, God uses man, man, male and female. We know that. Them guys, they hiding out in, uh, uh, in, in the upper room. Hey, them women at the tomb. Talk about where, where y'all laid him? Where is he at? Where is he at? They weren't playing around. They had the tomb. They there, they there when, when it's time to get up. We don't need that in our faith, praise God. Respect everybody, huh? I'm, okay, I'm sorry. And pay women what they deserve on their jobs. Don't get me going. Money matters. Pay them what they deserve. They doing the job, pay them just as much or more than who? Uh-huh. Doc got a little political there. Oh, my goodness. Because Jesus is looking at us. And how you do deal with money. Amen. And somebody said, well, what are you doing? I, I, I show you what I've done. I, yeah, I don't preach nothing that I, that I don't do. You know, yeah, um. but, but they support the man of God. They, they support the work of God. Now, let's look at verse 19. Now, King James said, my God shall supply all your needs according to you what? How many of you heard that before? How many, how many people said to you, the Bible said, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. How many, we heard that, right? Well, 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 we take that out of context. That's right. That was for the church, oh Lord, the Philippians that gave to the man of God. The principle is if you give to the man and woman of God for the work of ministry, not, not for the work of him going and buying a bunch of new stuff. Now somebody who's watching, I don't need your money. Got my own money. In God, praise God. So don't, don't, don't go with me on that one, glory to God. But so we quote that to people who don't even give. That don't apply to you if you ain't giving to the work. That is not for you. We ain't talking to you. No. My God goes by all my needs. No, he's not. You didn't activate what he said. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, I spit your mom, ladies in the house today. Give it up for lady. Praise the Lord for her. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lady, no. That was not a, even when I was struggling, I would give, I had $25 to give Apostle Wright. I gave it to him. I wasn't giving 25 Amen. Oh, glory. I, I, I graduated from that. Am I telling the truth, mom? Absolutely. Now give to her, praise God, what I was giving him as my spiritual mom. I ain't bragging. Do it not, Dr. Audrey. And we bless her as a church. Do I'm not I'm telling you the truth, praise God. Why? Because I know I want God to supply all my needs and I can activate that by giving to the work, to the woman, a man of God. You see, see some of y'all stingy. You don't need my money. No, I don't. You need me. No, I don't need your money. You need me. Like I need later, like I need the boss. I need them. I need someone. I need a place to put this seed because I'm looking for a harvest. I need a place. A good. See, some of y'all ain't looking. I'm, I'm trying. 
Yes, you may not be looking for nothing. I love you. you now, this don't bring you to heaven. This don't go uh, k- k- to hell. None of that. Praise God. But I'm telling you, praise God. I'm, I, I am Dr. Caracas Watkins, Doc Rock, praise God. I'm looking for a harvest. I need a place to put a seed. I need a place to put a seed. I got some big dreams God given me. I have vision God has given me. I'm going places, amen. I'm Doc Rock. You better join me at the top in God. Praise God. It's, oh, glory to God. Hey. So first, so, so verse 19, trying to calm down. And see, I don't, I, I probably haven't taught on giving to the men and women of God or giving in years. I don't, I don't, because I, I'll never want to be called a money person because it's not who I am. I'm, I'm a principal, but if I don't teach you the principles of money, you, you'll never get there. You'll never get there. Faking like you have some. We know you, ain't, you got that nice bag. It ain't even real. You got five dollars in the bank. I love you. See, but the devil will set you up like that. He really will. But here's what he said in verse 19. And I'm not against anybody having nice purses, shoes. I got nice shoes, y'all. Night bill. Ain't none of this stuff cheap. That stuff ain't cheap. I got on. I got on free. Yeah, I ain't tell you what I got on, but I, I, I ain't cheap. <laughs> but I'm a giver. I'm a giver. Glory to God. Verse 19. This week. He says, I am convinced because you gave to me that my God will fully satisfy every need you have. Oh my goodness. Every need you have. For I have seen the abundant riches of glory revealed to me through Jesus Christ. Every need you have, he said, church at Thessalonica is going to be given to you. When you do what's proper with your money, woo, every knee. Tell us about every knee. Every knee. And see, that's why I don't sweat it when we get, get up against the wall. Because I know I'm a giver. The businesses that, that, that I lead, com- organization companies, we are givers. We give back to the community, we give. So when I was in need of a million plus dollars a few years ago, yeah, yeah, I needed 1.3, I mean 1.5 what it was, million. I needed it the, the next week. Let y'all hear what I just said. 1.5 million I needed. Not, not like good thing to have. No, needed it. Gotta have it. I was not at all not sleeping, walking the floor at night. What's that, Dr. Audrey? I was snowing. <laughs> I know what my God said. I know what my God showed me. And I'm going to trust in him. I've been on the top. I've been on the bottom. On the bottom right now when it comes to this business. But okay, but I'm trusting you, God. Went to the mailbox on the Sabbath. Good God Almighty. One, 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 two, one, three. I ain't gonna tell you what it was. Overflow, baby. Overflow. Gave it back to the people. Over. You ain't saying nothing. Some of you, some of you, some of you walking in overflow. You can't walk in overflow when your giving is in underflow. Overflow. Overflow. All right, number four, number four, number four. I'm, I'm trying to help you get to where God wants you to be at. 
And, and if I offend you, I'm not trying to. I'm not apologizing. But I'm not trying to offend you. I'm trying to challenge your mental state of seeing how money works and how, and how you use it. Okay? You can have anything you want, but you got to do it the right way. You can have anything you want, but you got to do it the right way. Amen. There's no shortcuts to success. You have to take the stairs. No elevator. You have to take the stairs. And some of you, some of you, some of you take the elevator. And that's a violation. Are y'all hearing me? It's a violation. You buy, you, you, you're in a car you can't afford. You, 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 you barely, oh Lord, I'm in trouble. You, you barely making it trying to impress people and you can't, you can't even pay your tithes and your offering. You can't even help anyone. Because you're trying to impress people. Earthlings. Little earthlings. And you're not going to impress them too long because they, they get jealous and talk about you. Who, who she thinks she is in that new car? Who they think, who, who do you think he is? I see that new suit he got on. He ain't impressing me. I'm impressing you because you said something. I learned from, from my, my father, from, from Apostle Wright, was he never tried to impress people. He, just, he was just himself. He just, he just be himself. Now, he was sharp, always, smooth, cut you up preaching, you didn't, know, you didn't even know you was bleeding. See, I, see, 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 you know you're bleeding sometimes with me, but with him, you didn't know you were bleeding. Then you're like, oh, good, he'll put a Band-Aid on. I'm trying to be like him one day. Quite got there yet. I got there yet. Okay, but, but, but stop, stop trying to impress people. Steward, let's talk about stewardship and accountability right quick. As stewards of the resources God has given us, we are called to be wise and responsible. We're getting ready to talk about this parable in Matthew, the 25th chapter. Okay, because we, we can honor God when we are good stewards. Okay, now, 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 let's talk about this parable. It's a lot of reading. So I'm going to read straight through and then we'll come back and do commentary on it. Uh, Matthew, the 25th chapter, Matthew 20, 25, 14 through 30. It's a lot of, a lot of scripture, but I, but I got to read it for context. Matthew 25, 14 through 30. Let's go. It says, again, Heaven's kingdom is like a wealthy man who went on a long journey and summoned all he trusted, all his trusted servants, and assigned his financial management over them. God has, ass has assigned his financial man management over you. Okay. Before he left on his journey, he entrusted a bag of 5,000 uh, gold coins to one of his servants, to another a bag of 2,000 gold coins, and to the third a bag 1,000 gold coins, each according to his ability to manage. So he already has said, you can manage these things. So they can't make an excuse that they couldn't manage it. All right. The one who entrusted, the one entrusted with 5,000 gold coins immediately went out and traded with the money, and he doubled his investment. In the same way, the one who uh, was entrusted with 2,000 gold coins traded with the sum and likewise doubled his investment. But the one who had been entrusted with 1,000 gold coins dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. Verse 19. After much time had passed, the master returned to settle accounts with his servants. The one, was, the one who was entrusted with 5,000 gold coins came and brought 10,000, saying, See, I have doubled your money. Commending his servant, the master replied, You have done well and proved yourself to be my loyal and trustworthy servant. Because you have been faithful, being a faithful steward to manage a small sum, now I will put you in charge of much, much more. You will experience the, the delight of your master who will say to you, enter into the joy of the Lord. Verse 22. Then the one who had been entrusted with 2,000 gold coins came in and said, See, my master, I have doubled what you have entrusted to me. Verse 23. Commending his servant, the master replied, You have done well 
and prove yourself to be my loyal and trustworthy servant because you have been faithful to manage a small sum now I will put you in charge of much, much more. You will experience the delight of your master. You will say, he who will say to you, enter into the joy of the Lord. Verse 24. Then the one who had been entrusted with 1,000 gold coins came to his master and said, Look, sir, I know you are a hard man to please, and you are a shrewd and ruthless businessman who grows rich on the backs of others. That right there is a slap in the face. I was afraid of you. So I went and hid your money and buried it in the ground. But here, but here it is. Take it. It's yours. Verse 26. But his master said to him, you're an untrustworthy and lazy servant. If you knew I was a shrewd and ruthless businessman who always makes a profit, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? Then I would have received it all back with interest when I returned. But because you were unfaithful, I would take the 1,000 gold coins and give them to the one who has 10,000. For the one who has been given more until he overflows with, for, for the one who has, who will be given more until he overflows with abundance. And the one with hardly anything, even what little he has will be taken from him. Verse 30, in conclusion of this scripture uh, passage. Then the master said to his other servants, now throw that good for nothing servant far away from me into outer darkness where there will be great misery and anguish. Whoa! Many things happening right here. One thing that's happening right here that's uh, important uh, to, to, to know, praise God, is that oh, they left here. They got to do, yeah. talk back again. Ain't yet. That's all right. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. They are. It's cool. It's cool. Those who are watching, you know, we got people going to do connect zone after this and they had to leave. No problem. Um, see, people who don't have any money always complain that rich people keep getting more. And, and they do. Now, a lot of it is nefarious. A lot of it is not proper. But some is just that, just that they take a risk to invest their money. The problem with you when you don't give and invest the little you have, God can't trust you with more. You got to be a, a steward of what you have now. Stop complaining about you not having, uh -huh, yeah. stop complaining about you not having anything when you do not take care of what you have now. You, we get our income tax, oh my goodness, and we rich for, a, for, for, for two a week. Because we take, we, we, we take seven, eight thousand dollars and blow it. It is a vicious cycle. And, and, and that's why God don't give you more. You, we have to learn to be stewards over God's business. If you have your own business, entrepreneur, you got to be a good steward over that money. So God can keep reinvesting in you. I, I tell you out loud, and we have some people who are business people here, and they've been asking me, what, Doc, what do you do with your business? How do you tithe? I tithe off the top. I learned that, amen, from, uh, from, from business people uh, like, 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 like uh, 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 Hobby Lobby and, and people like that, okay? They tie off the top. So what, my business, whatever, whatever comes in, before we give, I pay anybody, we, we give 10% back to God. I I'm not talking about my personal job, I'm talking about business. Why? I, because, because I'm going to be a good steward, so now God can open up other doors for me. And he's doing it. And he's doing it. And he's doing it. And he's gonna, he gonna do it for you. Just not gonna do it for me. You have to manage what God has given you. You have to manage your money. Are y'all following me? We're gonna get into some good stuff after this. But 
the little that you have, what are you doing with it? I'm going to fix income. Unfix it. Unfix it. You get X amount of dollars a month. That's all I'm going to come in. Unfix it. Start giving. You may can't give a lot. Maybe it's a dollar. May I use you, Keith? Keith, one of our pastors. He first got here, he didn't have anything. Now, him and Pat, they rolling now. They're doing pretty good. And he would bring and put 50 cents on the altar. That's all he had. That's all he had. Not $50, I said, 50 cents. Now he put some in my hand almost every Sunday. And, ain't, and he ain't put no 50 cents in my hand at all. I'm not saying this for somebody to come put some money in my hand. Don't need your money. If you want to give, give. If you want to get love off and give. Don't need your money. I'm trying to get you blessed. Don't. What, what did he say, y'all? Don't need what? Don't need your money. So ain't no pressure. Those who watching, not a money girl. But don't, no, don't need. No, 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 no. Not to make it. God has blessed us. But what I'm telling you is principles. That's going to get you to the next level. Principles that you can be able to use to go forward in God. That you don't, that, that, that you, that God can invest in you. Don't you want to be an, an, an investment for God? God going to use you for that. So into other people. God going to bless you. We're not a fraction. It's probably going to be like six parts to this or seven. Got a lot of other stuff. Because beginning next week, Oh, we got to, we'll still talk about this next week. We're we'll talking money on a mission. We got some things to talk about. How wealth going to happen in your kingdom, how you going to get it, practical ways. I mean, we're just going to get into some good stuff. It's all him. Y'all ain't got it, but I do. We're going to get into some good stuff. Because you're going to leave out from this series understanding how your money is spiritual. It's for the kingdom. Tell somebody it's for the kingdom. It's for the kingdom. It's for the kingdom. And God gonna use it. Stand to your feet. Father God, we've did what you asked us to do today. But there's room for much, much more. Room for more, God. Every eye closed, except those who are working at altars. Every eye closed. If you are here today, we're talking about money, we're talking about Jesus blessing us, that Savior that died on Calvary's cross, hung now, died, was buried in a borrowed tomb, and got by the grave on the third day, declared all power of heaven and earth is in his hand, the gospel of Jesus. And you want that Jesus that's going to help you manage the money, help you, not just money, but have joy, have love in your heart. And you there, and you are not saved. You are not saved, but you want to be saved. You want Jesus coming to your heart. Maybe you're watching from where you're at online. You want Jesus coming to your heart. Those who are here, if you want Jesus coming to your heart, just raise that hand up. If you're not, if you're not saved already, if you're not saved, I'm talking those who are not saved, but you want God to save you. You want God to save you. Those who are watching by online, YouTube. I don't see your hand, but I feel your hand. Father God, every hand that's lifted, we pray right now, Father God, that they would accept you as their Lord and Savior. The Bible says, Romans 10 9, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So those who raise their hands here or at home, repeat after me, say, Father God, I'm a sinner. And you, and you can say it with me just to help them out, y'all. Everybody can say it together. Father God, I'm a sinner. I believe in my heart in Jesus Christ. He died on Calvary's cross and was resurrected on the third day. Thank you, Father God, 
through the power of the Holy Spirit for coming into my heart and saving me. Thank you, Jesus. I'm saved. Put your hands together for those who just got saved. Hallelujah. Also, also you here and you want to join this ministry or you online, you want to join. Go, go to our, you online, they're going to tell you what to do in a minute. Uh, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. But we welcome you. We welcome you to the connection with that. We're doing it just a little different now. I'm doing an invitation. Um, but, and they're going to tell you if you want to join what to do. But money matters. Money is spiritual. Let's go forward in God. Love on somebody. Bless somebody. Be a blessing this week. I double dog dare you to bless somebody this week. Five dollars, a lunch, two dollars, whatever, and watch God bless you. It's Super Sunday. Jesus on the throne. I'm Doc Rock. You join me at the top.